Okay guys, welcome back to part 4 of the Microsoft Flight Simulator development series. Today is going to be a full-fledged episode filled with wonderful content. We are going to basically finish the exterior. So I'm going to be showing you prop animations today. I'm going to be showing you landing gear animations today. We're going to go ahead and finish out the animations that we didn't do uh, last time. We only have the uh, uh, ailerons working. We're going to finish the uh, um, rudder as well as the elevators today. And then I'm also going to show you a couple quick tricks to uh, finish the rest of the exterior as far as the gloss on the exterior so she's nice and shiny from the game. We're going to fix the windshield so she's see-through and give it that reflection in the ambient occluders as well as rain effects. So today is going to basically be finishing the exterior. and Hopefully we uh, uh, get a lot of this done quickly. Um, this is probably going to be a long episode based on how much I want to uh, show you guys today. But uh, the reason for that is because I'm working on other projects, so I'm really trying to spend some time between everything and equally uh, a lot my time, as well as get into the interior, because I know a lot of you guys are really dying for some interior tutorials now. So uh, let's go ahead and start. So before we get into anything, we are going to finish the animations. And someone pointed out in the last video, and thank thankful for them, that the ailerons were backwards. So... As you can see here, we drop into animation and we do it. The ailerons are working the way they should be working. However, in the game, when uh, it goes down to uh, create lift, what's actually happening is it is creating drag. So we just need to invert these animations so that instead of the left aileron starting down position, it needs to start in the up position. So I'm going to show you a tip, a quick trick to uh, mirror those effects in case you have the similar issues in your project. So. Once you drop it to an NLA track here on the animation, the left aileron percent key, you notice that if you click on the aileron, you click on this, you don't have any more dope sheet. You don't have your keyframes anymore, and that is because you dropped it to an NLA track. So what you need to do is you need to right click on that NLA track, do start editing stashed actions, and you'll get your keyframes back. Okay? But if you clicked on something else, those keyframes go away. So make sure that you're clicking on the uh, object that you wish to edit. Once you do that, go ahead and highlight all those keyframes, right click on them, go to mirror by times over current frame and it will mirror all of your animation keys. Next press G on your keyboard or golf and uh, go ahead and move that back to 0 and 100 and you can now see that our ailerons are the same because we have mirrored the left aileron. Once you're done with that, go ahead and right click, stop editing stash, let's go ahead and do the next one real quick. Once again, mirror time over current value press G line it up and that's it so that was a real quick how to mirror something if it's backwards in uh, the game uh, next we're going to go ahead and do this uh, rudder so let's animate it for the first time we'll go to 50 like before add the neutral position go to 0 let's go ahead and drop this down 15 degrees add the keyframe Go to 100, go to positive 15 or negative 15, add another keyframe, and we have our rudder. Uh, we're going to drop that to, to, to an NLA track, and now we need to go find the name. So once again, let's go to our XML script. Uh, pop that open, go to your XML script so you can start putting the animations in there. Let's go down to the uh, um, elevator, and it looks like we already have the elevator percent key. If you can't find it, once again, go to your, your exterior behaviors, search elevator, and then it, it's right there, the anime name. And you just need to copy this line once again, go to your uh, in between your use template lines and uh, paste that and make sure it's in the right location. And then if you don't know the uh, length again, once again, it's in the uh, custom animation code here, length of 100. Okay, so now that we got that, our, or our elevator will work in the game. Now, I've left this um, bad on purpose for the uh, rudder because a lot of people are having these issues. They're separating the, um, the control surfaces from this base model, but their origin is completely off, so they can't animate it real nice. So I'm going to show you how I've done that. 
So uh, what you got to do is you got to set your origin in the right location so that it can rotate up and down the axis correctly. So the best way I do is I select that object that I want to edit the origin on. I select forward slash on the numpad. That will isolate your object and it's really easy. So if you keep going back and forth between that, you can isolate, de-isolate. You can even select other objects and add that and then isolate those together so you can see them. So it's going to be really helpful when you get into uh, some uh, real tight spaces and you need to isolate things so that you're not bouncing around your whole plane trying to figure things out. So let's go ahead and re-isolate that. Now we're going to go to the front of this object. Um, and what you're going to want to do here is go to edit mode and you can go ahead and select vertices, edges, or faces. I, I like to find faces the easiest way uh, to do things. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and select a couple of these um, front faces. Okay. Now that I've selected a couple of those front faces, as you can see, I'm going to uh, hold shift and S. As I'm holding shift and S, there's a bunch of cursor to selection options or selection to cur cursor options. I'm going to do cursor to selected. Now you can see that it's placed a cursor mark on that face. Okay. Now once we got that cursor mark, we're going to go to object mode. We're going to right click on that object again and we're going to go to set origin. Set origin to 3D cursor. And now we just have that origin moved to that cursor position. So it's nice and uh, rotating on that origin that we wanted it to be on. Okay. So let's go ahead and de isolate that with forward slash on the numpad and uh, animate our rudder. So let's go to uh, or 50, set that keyframe to zero, uh, set the uh, Z axis to probably 80 degrees. Add the keyframe, go to 100, and set that to 110. Now, as you can tell, it's uh, not perfect here as far as like uh, where that origin was placed, and that's a lot to deal with just the model itself. Uh, you can place that origin anywhere and uh, recorrect the rotation there so it's actually running smoothly and not coming off the back end here. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to be spending too much time on this since it's a tutorial so you kind of get the idea of what's going on here. Okay, uh, so now that we got that, we're going to go drop that to an NLA track. Oh, once again, we need to rename this uh, rudder so it works in the game. So I'm going to copy this elevator percent key on the elevator, sorry, not rudder and uh, paste that in there. So now that we know that that action is assigned to the elevator percent key. So let's go ahead and finish out uh, the rudder. So what we need to go here, we see rudder. Obviously we don't have that name, so we just have the rudder template, the use template and close template. So we need to go to the exterior. We need to search rudder. And once we found rudder, we can find that anime name. We're going to go ahead and copy that line. Paste it in the middle of this fix the positioning and there's our rudder percent key we'll go ahead and copy that and uh, rename our NLA track to rudder percent key okay so now all of our exterior uh, surfaces on our plane are animated as you can see here and we can move on to the next thing so the next thing I want to cover is going to be fixing our um, XML scripts because it, it's pretty messy right now. So like I said, Notepad++ makes it really simple to uh, consolidate these and to see what you're doing. So we're going to hit minus on a couple of these things so we can kind of see we got the elevator template, the elevator trim template, the rudder template, the rudder trim template, the aileron template, um, the, the flaps template. We don't need flaps. This bird doesn't have flaps. So we're going to get rid of the flaps template. Re-minus. Let's clean it up a little bit more. Here's some more flaps. So we're going to delete everything between the use template close and the use template open. Okay. And then once again, like I said, component handling. This is our handling surfaces and we need to close out the component. Now we're moving on to component gears. And uh, let's go into gears. We're not going to have a, a bunch of this stuff. We can actually use everything on the center template. So what we're going to do is delete everything but that center template. And I'll be showing you how to animate your full gear set with the center template, which I find way easier. 
Uh, you can use all the uh, all the tires and the gears if you want to animate things individually. Um, but I'm going to be showing you how to uh, do it in a different sense, um, which I like way more. So go ahead and delete those. And once again, the component is now closed out and we have our gear. Now we're going to go into the engine, which is our propeller template. I do not like the propeller templates. Today we are not going to use the propeller templates. I find them very hard to use and figure out. Um, it's actually easier for me personally to use custom animation coding. So I'm going to delete the full engine component. And we're going to close that out with behaviors. Okay. And then once again, this was our right aileron badass from episode three. We're not going to need that anymore. So we're just going to delete that custom animation. Okay. And then uh, we're going to make this easier on ourselves too. And we're going to do a, uh, a break exclamation mark dot dot dot. Actually, I'm doing this completely wrong. It's like this. So these are just lines that are ignored. So we can uh, make sure we post something in here to let us know that custom animations go below this line, just so we never forget, okay? Because uh, once again, our behaviors file, our behaviors open and close is everything included in that exterior file right here. And we want to make sure that everything that we've used in this behaviors file is separate from all of our custom animations and other behaviors that we happen to pull in the future. So uh, I like to make little notes in here so I remember that if I use custom animations, they need to go below this line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. Next, I want to jump into the prop, okay? Now, this bird already has a prop, and I've already separated it from the base model. However, I spent a lot of my time today getting you guys a nice template that just is a drag and drop workaround, okay? So this is it. This is the... Uh, the magic of Nuke TV. It is the uh, Dev Series Blender template, okay? And what I've done here is I've created a base blur, a base side, a base slow, and a base still. And the best way to explain that is if I move these here. So let's go ahead and move this one to negative one. Move the base blur to a positive one. And let's move our base side to positive 1.5, okay? or just to make it easier to see. So as you can see here, our prop is a little bit more complicated than the rest of our animations. It is a three part, I wanna say almost four, I don't like to count this side one, it's its own game. Um, but it is for the most part a three part mesh that changes meshes retro retroactively in the game based on how fast your RPMs are turning. And <laughs> now I know that sounds crazy, but uh, that's what it is. So what I've done is I've simply copied this cone multiple times throughout those three profiles. We have our still profile with our props. And trust me, these props look good in Blender, but they're very low res in game. Uh, like I said, this is just a template for you guys to work off. So if you import this template, you like this template, go ahead and just replace the cone and the props you can go ahead and keep these uh, blurred uh, templates um, to use because it's spinning pretty fast. You're not going to notice a difference. As you can tell, they're pretty simple. Um, but yeah, if you use this template, go ahead and just re replace the cones and the props. But um, yeah, so in each one of these sections, I've copied the cone throughout. And uh, the side profile, that sticks through all three of them, okay? So when this, when this is... Uh, placed over, I guess not all three, it works with the two slow and the blur, okay? So I'm gonna show you exactly what I did in each one. So each one of these are just a empty, okay? And if you don't know what an empty is, you can go to add up here, an empty, a plain access, and now you have an access here, okay? So let's go ahead and copy this cone, maybe maybe like a uh, the prop set, so you can kinda of see what I'm talking about here. So now we have a empty and our meshes, okay? And uh, n nothing is animated yet. And what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to wanna select our, um, our cone and our props, and then also select our empty. Do control P to parent, 
and then we're going to parent to the object, okay? And uh, if you've made a bunch of transformations, you can control P and you can do parent to object and keep your transform. What that did up here is it created that empty and it placed those two meshes into that empty. Now, once you have something in the empty, you can go ahead and animate this empty and it animates the prop. So it's really nice when you have multiple meshes and you just want to animate it into a single empty animation parameter, okay? Now, uh, what I've done on all three of these that are just ready to go in game is I've animated each one already. And uh, if we look at the animation tab here, I've animated the blur, the slow, and the base. And the way that it works is um, we got 0 to 100, and it's just doing a full 360 degree turn. Okay? Um, pretty simple stuff there. Now, under each one, we have our um, prop animation, our prop blur, our prop animation, our prop slow, our prop still, and our prop animation. Now, the still the slow and the blur are just going to be placeholders. So if I clicked on each individual one and I started editing stack, stacked actions, you can see that we're doing this uh, full blur one over here. It is not rotating. And that is because these prop blur, slow, and uh, still animations are just um, placeholders so that the, the sim can read RPMs. Now, these prop animations, that's your actual 360 degree turn that these guys are doing, okay? So if we actually went into here, well, I guess we can just see it all here. This is the actual turns going on. Now, I made it like this on purpose on the still so that you could see that the still is not rotating. And if I go into the prop animations, click on that, you can see that it rotates, okay? So you, you can kind of see that it takes whatever one's on top that's the one it's going to show in Blender. But each one of these, and that's why the magic of NLA tracks, nonlinear animation, is it's basically letting the game engine choose which one of these animations at a given time to uh, use. So let's go ahead and stop that animation. And then once again, this side action here, I haven't animated it yet. Um, and I think I actually did animate it, 0 to 100. Uh, and if we go ahead and look at it, let's see if it's rotating. Yeah, it is. So it's rotating 0 to 100 on that guy. And um, let's go ahead and drop that to an NLA track and go ahead and call that prop side. Okay, I'm going to save this template so that you guys can use this in the future um, with your own projects. But now you get it. So I, all I've done is I've animated this empty. As you can see here, each individual empty has an animation profile to it. Multiple NLA tracks that the game engine will be calling on. And uh, this is very similar to how you're going to be doing things with multiple meshes like wheels, turbin, turbines, um, um, jet engines as far as like uh, uh, your uh, af afterburner. And then also uh, it's going to be how you do things like the flight stick. You're going to want to assign things to empties with multiple actions like this so that you can have a left to right on the flight stick and an up to down on the flight stick. And we'll be getting to that later on in the tutorial, hopefully the next episode. So let's go ahead and delete these uh, for now, this, this empty we created. Right click, delete hierarchy, there's no need for that. And uh, let's go ahead and click on each individual one here now that you kind of understand how this thing was made um, oh, and, and one real quick thing before I merge all these back together to the same location. If we go ahead and click on one of our props to see the material on it, I have basically kept the uh, shading node the same as a regular BSDF. However, I added a Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, modifier to it. So let's go back to uh, animation here so we can look at that. And as you can tell, it's our uh, BSDF principle. I've left all this the exact same. If you want it to be a little bit more sparkly, you can adjust the roughness on things, okay? Um, and we'll get into that more when we go to our exterior profile. And then I've applied this Microsoft Flight Simulator standard uh, modifier here. And there's a bunch, and we'll be going through a couple more today, like the windshield. And uh, I've added an albedo. 
And with the albedo, I just did a props PNG, and then with the side one, I've added a prop side PNG. And I'll be including those in the uh, templates as well, so you can use those in your own projects. And uh, down here, I've made sure that my alpha mode was blend. Now, if you go to shading and you notice that this alpha multiply is not connected to your alpha when you do all this manually, all you got to do down here is change this from uh, blend to opaque and then change it from opaque back to blend. And that way it's transparent in the game and it looks real nice. I know a lot of people have done this in the past before and their props are not see-through and they're trying to figure out how come it's not see-through. It's probably because their alpha multiply is not connecting to their alpha on their B, B, BSDF principle uh, uh, modifier. Okay, so now that you guys understand that, let me get back to merging these together. So let's go ahead and go back to modeling, um, click on each individual empty and put that Y location back to zero so all these things are laying on top of each other the way that it should. And this is what it's gonna look like. It's pretty ugly in Blender, but it looks great in the game. So you may go ahead and save that so you guys have a nice template to work with after this tutorial when I upload this for you guys. And then what you're going to want to do next is go into the old reliable. And you're going to want to get rid of this prop. I mean, we can keep this prop and you can uh, work on this prop as a base, but we have to separate the cone from the, the, the props. And I just don't feel like doing that today, so I'm just going to delete that. Now with your own project, I recommend definitely not using my template meshes because they are very low. <laughs> quality um, but you're going to be wanting to replace those cones that you see in my uh, um, uh, template with your own and same with the prop so now what we're going to want to do is if we copied all four of these it's not copying the individual stuff between so we're going to want to open up and expand every single item on here I'm sure there's an easier way but this is the only way I know how to do it in blender and uh, like I said, I don't use Blender professionally for other things. I'm just using it for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I mostly delve into uh, Cinema 4D for the stuff I do with 3D modeling. Um, so if there's a quick, a faster way to do this, please let me know in the comments. But uh, for the most part, I just expand everything. Now I'm going to click on the top one, hold Shift, click on the bottom one so everything in there is selected. I'm going to... Uh, do control C to copy all that go into this project and control V and now we have all that information including the material um, the transparencies the modifiers for Microsoft Flight Simulator in the game now as you can see in our side view this prop is massive it's going below the landing gear so what we can do is we can uh, go ahead while we have everything selected we can go back to modeling Click on this little side view here. Uh, I've completely lost what I'm doing here. And why my active tool is gone. There we go. Each individual item. So I'm going to select all my items again and I'm going to go to once again to side view and um, change the scaling of all these so that it matches my project. Okay, so I'm just going to scale everything down. And I think that is fairly close to what our nose cone should be. And she's looking pretty good. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, now we have our propeller in the game with everything we need. Now all we need to do is do our XML scripting. Okay, So I'm going to go ahead and reopen the animation tab so you guys can see all the extra stuff we just added. And it's nice to finally have some nice names in here. Obviously, I haven't named everything else in here yet. But uh, we can leave this open so we know exactly what to call our XML scripts. So we're going to be using custom XML scripting for the prop. I find it much easier. 
And uh, what we can do here is we can go ahead and make sure that our XML is open. And then we're going to want to go to the Microsoft Flight Simulator SDK, go to our samples, aircraft, and man, I hate to say it, but the simple aircraft actually has something good in it for once. So we'll go to package sources all the way into its model folder and open up its XML. Now the reason I like this is because they use custom animation for their props and I find it way more efficient. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and copy all their animation lines here for the prop anime blurred slow and still. Uh, and then we're going to go to our project. Custom animations go below this line and we're going to paste those. Fix the positioning. What we need to do next is we need to generate our own online GUIDs. So we're going to go to this generator tool, refresh a couple times, copy that, replace these with our own GUIDs. Um, I recommend changing them even if you're using my template um, because a lot of people are probably making aircraft and maybe they'll forget to change it. Um, during this and leave somehow my uh, GUIDs in here so I recommend even if you're following the tutorial to change it in case you ever downloaded someone's custom that they used my tutorials for in the future okay now that that's done let's make sure our names are right okay so we're using our prop anime okay good prop anime our prop one blurred I did not name it that I named it prop blur so we need to get rid of the one, we need to change it to prop blur, we need to go to type parameter two, get rid of the one, change it to blur, fix the positioning. Now prop slow, prop one slow, so we need to get rid of the one on both of those. Prop one, so we need to get rid of this, the one on both of those. And uh, we are set up for our animation line. So now let's go to our uh, animation sequences and uh, copy those. So if we go to the uh, prop animation, prop still, prop slow, and prop blurred, let's go ahead and copy all the part info of that. Oops. Control C, go to our project, go below that line, and Control V. And now we have our prop animation at anime length 100, which is good to go. Our uh, prop still, and we need to change, get rid of the one at animation 100, we're good to go. Our prop one slow, we need to get rid of the one at 100, we're good to go. And our prop one blurred, we need to get rid of the one and get rid of the extra, change it to blur, and now we're good to go there. So now we have our custom animation lines, and all we are missing is the, um, uh, the, the custom animation for the side profile. Now, I haven't quite found uh, the side profile yet so what we can do since I haven't found the custom animation for that to work off of is we can work off of what we already have and what we're going to be using is the um, um, the uh, prop uh, one of these uh, props slow or prop blur we're just going to um, copy that over and uh, insert our our prop side into it. So what we can do here is we can just copy this part info on the blur. Paste that info. Let's give it a uh, fix the positioning there. Okay, and we're going to change this to uh, prop side 100 and uh, we're going to change the percent to the minimal of the first slow, so 6.25. Wow. And I'll be explaining these uh, RPM percentages when we get in game so you can actually see the differences that they make. Um, and we're going to leave it at that. Now we just need to add this extra prop sideline up here. And we need to generate our GUID. Okay, so now we have our XML script uh, set up for our prop animation. Okay, 
So it wasn't too difficult. Uh, it's a lot of piecing things together and hopefully this template really makes this stuff easier for you guys. I'm trying to save as much time for myself but also to help the community save as much time for their projects. Um, pretty much the reason I made this tutorial because my first project I spent <laughs> 300 hours plus and I barely got to this part and uh, hopefully watching this tutorial you're now here in two hours. So. Uh, Go ahead and uh, save save our XML script here. Go back into our plane. And uh, let's go ahead and save it as is. Let's go test it in the game. And then we'll finish out the rest of the exterior. So uh, let's go ahead and hit save on our project. Export. Extended GLTF. Remember, we remembered our settings, so we don't have to ever touch that again, hopefully. Go to our dev series, the old reliable. Package sources, sim objects, airplanes, old reliable, model, and uh, save it in the uh, DA62 LOD. And remember, we set up our texture folder in here, so our new prop um, um, texture should be dropping in there automatically. And we'll go ahead and check that real quick, so it should be done any second. Okay, it's done. So now if we go back up one, go to our old reliable. If we look in textures, we now have our prop side and our props in here, okay? And uh, I'll be getting into UV, edit, UV mapping here in a second for our windshield, but uh, what I did to make sure that those, um, uh, those prop images were on there good is I loaded the image up, I selected the prop, let's do the prop blur for example, and uh, I went to edit mode, I selected A to select all of it, and I... Uh, unwrapped from the front view like this because that is what we're working with and I unwrapped the front view by going to UV project from view and uh, then I rescaled it to fit perfectly over that image well hopefully perfectly close to perfectly um, yeah so we'll get into UV a little bit later here um, but let's go ahead and start up Microsoft Flight Simulator and see how the prop looks in game okay now that the game is open fast forward there a little Let's go to Open Project, Old Reliable Project. We're going to see these uh, two pop-ups as always. We'll go ahead and build our package. Okay. We can uh, close that console. We can go into the world map. Go ahead and select our old reliable aircraft. And it is not showing up. We might have had an error here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. So if I scroll up here past the... Uh... Okay, so we don't have any. Once again, we just have the thumbnail and the spawn lister. This happens sometimes. Uh, if that happens, just go to Open Project again. Open your old Reliable. And there it is, 24 out of 23, so we should have our old Reliable showing up here now. There it is. Okay, so that happens sometimes when you build a brand new package. If you, have, if you start having issues with your package, you can always delete that folder and then rebuild it when you open the sim. Just make sure you never delete the package sources folder, because that's all your info. But that's probably why it happened. Um, because I deleted that package folder when I added all these extra things um, this morning and um, that was my first time generating it for today so I'm pretty sure I just had to do just like the first episode how that weird part where you gotta generate your package then reopen your project that's pretty much what I had to do there so let's go ahead and load up into game and uh, see how the props are working and uh, the rest of our external services while we're at it okay now that we are in game Let's go ahead and take a look at our external camera. And you can now see we have this nice prop animation. Now if I uh, go ahead and turn those engines off, you will see exactly what I'm talking about with the changing meshes.
So what it's doing is the game is recto retroactively changing the meshes as the throttle changes. So as you can see here, this is very low res, is kind of what I was talking to you about. Um, but let me go ahead and show you an example of what we can do here. So you could figure out your RPM percentage. In this case, it is calling the still at 6.5. Let's go ahead and change this to 20. We'll change our prop slow from 20 to the high of 50. And then we're going to change our prop blur max at 50. So this is saying that when I reach 20% of my throttle, or my max RPM, which should be linked to your throttle. Once I reach 20% my throttle, it's going to change the mesh to the prop slow. Once I reach 50% my throttle, it's going to change the mesh to the uh, prop blur. And then the prop side, if we change that to 20, it's saying once it reaches 20, it's going to stay um, using the prop side animation um, forward and on. Just kind of like the 50 here, it says once it reaches 50, there's no upper limit like there is here with the 50. There's no upper limit, so even up to 100, it's using this animation, and we're going to keep that the same for the side. So go ahead and hit save. Once again, open up our project editor and rebuild that package. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and shut down the engine again. So now you can see here when I start up my engine that we are using the the two um, the the prop slow, and as I increase, when we hit 50, right there, we change to the new prop um, blur. So it's kind of hard to see, but it really helps um, distinguish kind of what you want as far as the visuals on your your prop animations. And uh, that's why we added the side here. Look how nice these lines look. They look really nice, okay? And uh, a lot of people don't use the prop sides, but they make it look very 3D as far as when this thing's rotating. Um, and I absolutely love the way that the prop sides look on projects. And uh, you could probably change that down to a different number um, if you want. So like right now, it looks a little funky with the way the RPM is. We can probably change that RPM to activate the prop sides at more of like a uh, 40 or a 50. So yeah, there we go. Now, as you can see here, our textures are not on the aircraft anymore. And I did that on purpose because that is going into the next section and uh, a lot of people were having issues with their textures. So let's go ahead and pause the game and show you how to fix that. So back in to our model here. A lot of people were having issues where their textures were not loading up in game. So I've done this on purpose so that you can see how I fix this. So you see here, if I go to material preview we have a completely pink exterior. And that is because if I click on this, even though I go to my shadings tab and it says I'm using this image, it can't find the image. And this is probably because you moved your, your, your uh, source data around or your textures or you did something. So what you need to do is you need to hit X. You need to go to open again. You need to go to your, uh, your textures and you need to reopen your textures. And then that's all you have to do. And then uh, some of these, like the base model here, has two textures, the airplane body and the airplane glass. So what you need to do for the glass is you can still see that that is not glass. We can click the X, open, reopen it, and voila. Uh, we got our textures back, okay? And uh, like I said, we can save that and export it, but we're gonna go on to the next part of the tutorial to Windows. So this part kind of sucks because once again it's a it's a model that is all one piece. So I'm going to isolate this cabin and uh, we're going to go ahead and select the Windows which let's go to edit mode. This is going to take a while so I'll probably fast forward to the stream and the part that kind of sucks is there's an exterior window and an interior window on this model. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the uh, interior uh, side of it and uh, just keep the exterior. And you're probably going to want to do that for most 
um, projects with a windshield is just have a single uh, mesh layer instead of two layers because it's going to start looking really weird when you start adding rain effects and stuff. So uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy this little fast forward I'm about to do. Go ahead and select faces and then uh, if you, it, the way to make it easier on yourself, if you go to here and go to select circle, you can just start selecting things like uh, paint and uh, basically just start selecting, hold shift and select. Okay, now that we have the interior selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit delete uh, faces and get rid of that interior mesh. We don't need that anymore. And uh, time to select the exterior mesh. See you in a bit. Okay, now that we have our exterior glass selected, let's go ahead and right click, separate those by selection. Now we just have our windshields. And uh, what's real nice and easy to test, if you just go to uh, object mode here, let's go ahead and click the windshields, move it up and down, ta-da, we have our windshields. So uh, what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to apply a windshield modifier to this. Now it's going to look real ugly in Blender, but it looks great in the game. So uh, what we need to do here is we need to go to material on it. Let's go ahead and separate this material by hitting X, which makes a whole new thing. We're going to call it uh, windshield material. And then we're going to go ahead and go down to roughness, change that to 0 0.05. We're going to go to... Microsoft material parameters we're going to select the windshield parameter and uh, we're going to go ahead and change the uh, alpha multiplier to 0 0.05 as well so 0 0.05 on the alpha 0 0.05 on it looks like our roughness went back so we should have changed that prior to selecting the modifier I mean after selecting the modifier so we'll change that again to 0 0.05 so uh, yeah select select your uh, windshield first on the modifier, change the alpha to 0 0.05 and then change the roughness to 0 0.05. Okay? Um, now if we look in our material preview here you can see that it's see-through but we don't see any nice reflections and you won't be seeing anything in Blender for the most part until you go into the game with that. Um, so before we go into the game we want envi an environment occluder so that our uh, um, our reflections and environment and rain effects look really nice so what you're going to want to do here is it's pretty freaking simple a lot of people overthink this just go to add let's add a new cube let's move that cube to zero 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 and uh, what you're going to want to do is make sure that cube fully engulfs your windshields um, so what you can do here is you can change the scale so it's covering our windshield and then you're going to want to maybe not cover the whole plane. Uh, I don't see any harm in that, um, but it is a mesh. So let's go ahead and change our Z scale as well and our Y scale or our X scale. And uh, just move that up and cover just those windshields and our everything. So there you go. So now that we have this box covering all the windshields, we're going to click on the box. We're going to create a new material. We're going to call it the environment mat. And then we're going to go down to material mode and select environment occluder. And that's all you got to do. 
And if you don't want that ugly thing shown in the game while you're or in Blender while you're editing things, all you got to do is hit this I button and hide it. So uh, now we have that fully set up in order to have our windshield working in game and rain effects. So uh, before we go test, let's finish the rest of the exterior out. Uh, let's go ahead and select our exterior. We're going to make this thing shiny like the game, okay? So as you can see, it's pretty dull. Um, what we need to do here is if uh, we select it, make sure we're on that material. Um, in this case, I believe it's the body. And then uh, just go down here to uh, roughness and change that down. Now look how shiny she looks, okay? So the more down, the shinier, the more up, the... Uh, the um, less shiny she looks on roughness okay so we're going to change it to like a roughness of um, 0.12 she looks pretty shiny with 0.12 she looks real nice and you can use this for everything uh, whatever flat materials you're using uh, if you go ahead and look in shading here it's just a simple BSDF principle with an output connected to your texture and so you can honestly start messing with any of these in here uh, you can even change the metallics we, we could probably make this thing, let's make it look a little bit metallic actually, that looks pretty cool. So we'll give it a little bit of a metallic. And uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator will incorporate uh, these blender settings into your setting. So uh, go ahead in the game, and there's going to be one more thing I need to fix here. Um, but I want to show you what's wrong before I fix it, because a lot of people are going to miss this if they, if they don't see it firsthand and then go, oh, I need to do this. So we rebuilt our package. Let's go ahead and resume. And look how nice and shiny. And wow, is she looking good, okay? Um, and we can see through our windshield here, but the, there is a problem. So if we go to camera, I mean not camera, options, windshield rain, and we overwrite the, override the rain rate. And let's turn that up to uh, about 54 here. As you can see, um, there is nothing in the game and uh, this is due to the fact that we don't have a UV map so what we need to do is we need to go to blender we need to click on our windshield and what I like to do is I like to go to our top view go to uh, UV editing top view <laughs> select all Let's get rid of this picture. Um, so once again, object mode, select our object, go to edit, select all by hitting A, and then this is our current UV map, which is garbage. Uh, it's very small. We want to fill the whole thing, okay? So what you're going to want to do, since we have this top view open, go to UV, project from view, and now we have it projected. And remember episode one when I said the aircraft needs to be facing down in Z? It's the same thing with UV maps. They need to be facing down in Z. That way that the, uh, um, the, the rain is washing off the aircraft in the right area. And uh, your wind is pushing the rain in the right direction. Okay, so now that we have that full, we'll go ahead and hit save on that. And then uh, if you're having problems where you don't see anything, uh, easy solution to that is you select everything, all the meshes. We go to mesh, we go to normals, and we flip those normals. And the reason we're doing that is because we were using the exterior and we deleted the interior, if you remember me doing that. Uh, and let's go ahead and export that once more. Let's uh, disable the rain, okay, we did, and uh, rebuild our package. Okay, now if we see our rain effects, you can see it is now mapped to our windshield, and the prop is slowly pushing that rain down the wind okay which is really nice and uh, 
You can actually change those uh, windshield rain with the override the wind rate and you can like set that to if you were flying through like a cloud and as you can see here it's blurring perfectly on the windshield. And the reason why I said delete extra layers if you have more than one layer on the windshield is because imagine if we had two layers right here you would see double the rain coming through that windshield and it would just look really funky. It would look like rain was stuck between two panes of glass. Um, so yeah, let's turn off that rain and let's uh, let's take this girl for a little flight and uh, end the episode. We're getting about an hour, over an hour here on the episode. So I hope you guys learned a lot today. And uh, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Always got to end the live stream with a crash landing for you where I uh, went ahead there and jumped on the tower. <laughs> 